August 10th, 2020 is an election like no other, and you need a team like no other. Hunt, Haynes, Ram, Bodarit, Naki, or Tanku, Lee, Rambali, Garner, Lakis, Zakur, Singh, Bear, Charles, Amin, Bodo, Charles, Walker, Munila, Hussein, Hoyt, Benjamin, Ragbir, Ratirab, Stowe, Andrews, Indarsi, Parry, Green, Sobers, Mohit, Obika, Roberts, William, David, John. Vote for the candidate and a leader you can trust. Kamla Prasad Bisesa. Election day when you stay in your hand. It's for the UNC and the rising sun, 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 sun. What time it is? No. What time it is? No. The United National Congress. Why wait? Now is the time. Dogra Politics. Tuesday night. We're going into the lion's den. Orapuch oh, East, oh, Member of Parliament, oh, Rudal Munilal, Tuesday night, Dogla Politics, 7 30. Hear the lion roar. Rambos, you can't give the lion any fight in that. gentlemen before we get into the bacchanal cool it lion you don't want to eat no rose now we don't want to eat no rose all right rudal munilal or east next member of parliament is here but we have some business to deal with first dr keith rowley archie what are you doing you're setting up camera you're fine too small it's all right oh lord you take away my lion all okay. anyway we are the rudal on the left day let me start off one time. We have plenty of action. We're going to interview Rudal Munilal in about an hour's time. Oh Lord, we starting late. Let me apologize. We had a, a Kucharan chase had traffic. It had Munilal fever all around. Not COVID and normal fever. Action. Everybody with masks. People come through. We had a fight through crowd. We sorry for starting late. Dogla politics is ready to go. Archie, you have a video there for me. Because this election is not a joke thing. You have a man who play narcos, who want to lime with Maduro, Pedevesa, Delcy, 14 indicted people in narco terrorism, money laundering, corruption, and drug trafficking. Run a little video there for me now, Archie. Start up the show hot one time. Rowley, no boy. Yeah, 
This rally is taking Trinidad and Tobago along a dangerous path. Throughout our young history as an independent country, Trinidad and Tobago has always had steadfast to the principles of democracy, free expression, and the rule of law. Trinidad and Tobago has always sided with those countries who share our values, like our many Caribbean neighbors, the United States, Canada, and the United Kingdom. These nations are critically linked to our economy and our safety. But now, Keith Rowley is moving us away from our traditional ally and towards nations considered to be pariah states. I take umbrage, Madam Speaker, I take umbrage at the United States Ambassador in Trinidad and Tobago making a public statement criticizing the actions of the government While the entire world is condemning the narco-trafficking Maduro regime, Keith Rowley is holding secret meetings with members of Maduro's elite inner circle. Prime Minister, was the government of Trinidad and Tobago concerned that the government has, had accepted at that time a visit by the Vice President of Venezuela, 24 hours after colleagues, officials, including the President of Venezuela, were indicted in the United States on drug trafficking, and narco trafficking and corruption charges. No, we had no concern with that. Now is the time to remember the values our ancestors fought for. We are a people forged in the fires of liberty. Now is the time to stand up against Keith Rowley. Now is the time to stand for Trinidad and Tobago's democracy. So when your member of parliament, Rudal Munilal, asked Keith Christopher Rowley, do you have a problem being close and recognizing a drug trafficker, a man who has been indicted, a man who has a bounty of 15 million US on his head, a man who has been indicted with 14 of his closest cabinet members, a man who's on drug trafficking, narco-terrorism, money laundering, and corruption charges. When Munilal asked Rowley that in the parliament, did you listen to Dr. Rowley? He had no problem with that. But I ask you all people, the intelligent people of Trinidad and Tobago, do you all have a problem with that? Do you all want to go to Disney World? Do you want to get US dollars to buy your goods, your stock? Would you like to go and visit your family in the USA? Would you like to be able to have your credit cards with a big limit? Would you like to be able to eat food? Because 72% of our food comes from the United States of America. Those of you who like to drink juice and fancy juice and some alcoholic beverages, Archie, all you control that audio. Thank you. All you getting both today with the Lions, then I am playing with no thing on this Dougla politics tonight. And share the live, please. Share it, share it, because the amount of information and coming. Y'all who want to be close to USA, y'all who want to get a visa to go up the road, do y'all have a problem? Do y'all have a problem with Rowley choosing? narco terrorists russia iran china over the united states of america well if you have a problem with that and if you like your u.s bank account and your u.s cash and your u.s goods and your u.s gucci bag and your u.s clothes and your u.s travel then you have to vote kamala vote unc vote 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 you have to vote what are they actually point at my closer than me i gain all our what? My voice is up. Make sure I do If you all have a problem for that, then you have to vote Kamala. Foreign policy is on the ballot. You're either going with Maduro, Iran, and Russia, or you're going with Kamala, USA, Canada, and the United Kingdom. The choice is clear. August 10th, foreign policy is on the ballot. Now, Rowley clearly thinks that all of us are stupid. Archie, line up some videos, please. Check and see. They now start a paved road. For five years, Munilal writing letter. He have about 50 road in Arapuch East. He begged them to pave. They ain't paved none. Kuchawan Trace have potholed big like swimming pool. But don't worry, we're coming to pave it just now after August 10. Because Kamala Pasad Bicessa shares resources throughout the country. She don't hold back on nobody like this rowly, disgraceful government that abandons three quarters of the country and only deals with those who done her money already. Now look at this. They pay all their roads in five years. 
They, ch they charge you more to fill up gas in your car. You bust more tire than ever in the last five years. You buy more brake pads and pay for more shocks than in history of owning vehicle. Look what them doing just on the eve of election because them feel they fire you. They take your laptop. They build no school. They leave early childhood center in Bush. But they feel if they do this, you go vote for them. Look how they think we notice. Show the video there in Archie. Watch that. All right, good afternoon, everyone. So, I'm from the constituency of Providence Estate, better known as Ikoko. So, they now came and paved the road in the neighborhood. As you can see, no fresh asphalt. They now paved it, they see where it is ending. And I'm just walking along this paved stretch of road that you all seen it, that they now come and pave. Now, you must know when is the election. And my thing is that we, the residents here, supporting the PNM, how much years? And what the kind of work that they present to the residents here? Imagine that. The picture of the road, you know? The pitch are road, but watch what they do. Even, they didn't even talk to the residents to move the cars. The pitch piece of the road and the cars are the side of the road. Now tell me now, whoa! Now tell me now if this is good governance. Billions, millions of dollars passing through flowing through this country, and this is the kind of work that they present to the residents who support in the PNM. How much? How much years? Watch. What the craziness that they do? Watch. Watch. The pitch road, you know, but watch. What the craziness that they do? And then the want we as residents to accept this around this election time. You must know. And I, I continue walking again through the road. Continue walking again. Going through the road at this newly pitch road. What you see rubble all at the side of the road. They didn't even clear the rubble. They just straight at the side of the road and the pitch around it. A country that have a pitch lake. And this is the kind of representation that we get in. Continue walking on the stretch of road. Continue walking. Watch, watch. Yes. All you see that I not or a put east, you know. Dai not Muni Lal constituency where you could say well they do that to, to spite Muni Lal and Kamla and Yellow and the UNC, you know. That is a PNM stronghold. If you do your own that, you could imagine what them go do Muni Lal and them. Show next, show last quavers now. And last quavers is PNM until August 10 to show last quavers, Archie. This is last quavers, recreational ground, last quavers football field that the PNM government that run here for over 30 years, for over 30 years, and taken we vote for over 30 years, go on the podium to claim say that they fix, they fix last quavers field. You understand? They claim say that they fix and they do this and they do that and they, they, they had the audacity they had the audacity to go on the podium and say that they fix Las Cuevas Field, right? What just after 30, over 30 years over 30 years they're running this place which is Las Cuevas, this is Las Cuevas football grounds watch it, they come and they put two lights more lights on the side you can hardly see when the night come or oh, they put lights, this is election time this is election time. I want the whole of Trinidad to see what it is going on in North Coast here with me. I want them to see what's going on with me. Watch. I want to let them see what it is we just all be going through. You understand? Yes. The fellas in Las Cuevas don't know whether to play football or water polo. They had to play a foot polo. They pain them for all here. And all they see them care. And all they want to vote race. All they want race is that. What race is that? Running race, swimming race, go kart race. Them are no shame. On August 10th, vote them out of everywhere, boy, get rid of them. Let them go and rebrand. Let them go and discuss. Let them go and pave their own thing. They're making garage in the middle of the road for all you. Let me tell you something. They know the only boss that he taken away laptop and all the PNM woman in St. James, but yes, yeah. They didn't study taking it from them, you know. That them are going to find five thousand dollars for laptop. Then now they put it on school book list. Then the two fired ministers of education, both of them get fired. Wap wap wap. But them tell you they do good. If you do good, you don't get fired. So, but now they, I remember I told you Joel Primus is down in BPTT. Then PNM man, a former youth league president of the PNM, he was handing out laptop down in Mayaro and down in the southwest down there. Now we see Heritage Petroleum 
which is coming up, which is Rowley's lawyer, who didn't know that Rowley's cousin had an email that Muniral say is the cousin email, and it's an email by mistake, but we have plenty more than email coming just now. Real email is not fake thing, not piece of toilet paper like what Rowley bring in the parliament would think type up. Now, Heritage. Heritage is giving out 110 computers. How is that? I thought the policy of Rowley's PNM is that children do not need computers, that children do not want laptops, that laptops are unnecessary, and for five years they took laptops from children. Heritage Petroleum last week made a donation of 110 computers to assist pupils who have been at home since the onset of COVID-19. But all your, all your cussing your own Prime Minister, all your, there's, an, uh, there's a revolt in the PNM. I see an article in the newspaper, I think there's a Guardian, and autism parents advise two political candidates. And it's written by Dr. Radhika Mahes. And this parent of an autistic child says, the point I'm trying to make is this. When you start a campaign in my area, you need to come with more than usual political nonsense. Otherwise, you won't get my vote or the vote of my entire family. The special needs population might not be significant throughout Trinidad and Tobago, but special needs support is significant in my little community. Please don't say vague things like special needs is next on my agenda. Of course, we're thinking about your children and others like them when you come. Well, let me tell you something. From 2010 to 2015, Kamla Prasad Bisesa as Prime Minister had special focus on children with special needs. She gave 2,500 per term, three terms per year, 7,500 per special needs student in each of the primary schools, private schools, sorry, for five years. That's upwards of $40,000 per special needs child to go to school. Keith Rowley cut that. Prime Minister Kamala Prasad Bisesa gave a 1500 autism grant to every child who had autism. Keith Rowley and his government did a means test of a parent and said if you make money, they took away the grant from your child. Kamala Prasad Bisesa and the UNC said that the grant is for the child. So nobody cares if you work hard and you are a lawyer, a doctor, a professor, a businessman, businesswoman, you sell doubles, you, you plant baji and you make millions, that's your business. The grant is for the child. Because you have money don't mean the child is not autistic. Kamala Prasad Misesa will return that grant to every autistic child. In special needs sport, Kamala Prasad Misesa increased special need funding for special needs, or special Olympics and Paralympics from the paltry 300,000 under the PNM up to 3 million per year. Kamala Prasad Misesa and the UNC government will build a home for special needs and Paralympic training center for sports science and moving forward the blind welfare cricket team will get full sponsorship as it did before so special olympics special needs children close to the heart of kamala Prasad Bisesa. so when you're talking about them saying next on the agenda that's pnm that's rowley imagine rowley took funding from special needs children that says it all not a human being should vote for a man who takes anything from a special needs child also we see the Down Syndrome uh, Family Network under Kamala Prasad Misesa, they got increased funding for all the events, whether it was the body walk or special conferences to bring down exceptional Down Syndrome athletes, uh, scholars, people who are working to show that Down Syndrome can be normal, they could go and get jobs. Kamala Prasad Misesa will increase that funding once again that Rowley cut it. So all across the board for special needs. If special needs is important to you, it's important to the UNC and Kamala Prasad Bisesa. When we moving on, right now, I see the Guardian, they come, they still with our same poll. Remember I done mash up the poll, but I really was happy from the poll because when you analyze the poll, Kamala up by about 20 points. Munilal, Munilal and them could relax a little. Nah, don't relax. I only joking. When I in a race, I want to beat you bad, bad, bad. And when I tell you, I want to beat you down in Labre. I want to hang your jack down in point fourteen. And if you only get me vex, if you only get me vex, I take Lopino, Bonnie, La Hoketa, and Davadio Mira to if only get me vex. I...
As all you notice, I didn't talk them marginal thing because them thing done gone yellow already. Maruga table, it don't have no more yellow. The Balize in the bush gone yellow. You can't see no red. Toko Sangri Grandi, well, Monroe had to study which court he going in next. But in Parliament, it's Nabila Green. And to the three fellas who don't know about African woman, try another video now, man. Anybody who like a nice African woman would have watched that and say, but I'm not the girl. I want to say good evening to Andrew Gabriel. How are you going? <laughs> Have you ever, have you ever had an African girlfriend, Andrew Gabriel? Rohan Sinidad, how you going, boy? I, you know, I, for a moment before in 2015, I thought you was bright. I thought you was of the lawyer Sinidad. I didn't know you was of the no school Sinidad. Well, how you going? Have you ever had an African girlfriend, an afro Chindigunya? How you going, boy, Ricky Ragunanan, boy? You build any more fence recently? I'm waiting for more video. I'm just telling all you hello, just because the Douglas like to be friendly, you know, in this political battle now. So the newspaper ball, Rowley edges Kamla for pr prime minister. The same, the same, the same poll that I tell you, when they dip their hand in the bag, I didn't say they did it on purpose, yeah, because Louis Bertrand is a good poll stand son. But you know in a sample, when you dip your hand, you might come up with more red or more yellow. You had to check and see. I told you that I worked out the factor in that survey of 600 people was about skewed 20, 24% towards the PNM and away from the UNC. So when you look at the other questions and you put in a factor after you take out plus or minus eight, because such a small survey could never be plus or minus four. You would see that Kamala was 20 points clear. So if the survey, with its skewing, says that Kamala equal to Rowley, it really means 20 points clear. But don't worry. We taking it as we equal. We going down the road, we fighting, we working harder, and we pushing it as an equal. Now, I have to deal with this small pin, man. Archie, sometimes I lose my words. I can't believe that this man is the Minister of National Security. And, and people, PNM, all you vote for he for true? Huh? And they're playing race card and telling all you vote for this? Archie, play the first segment. I have to take this stupidity in segments. Eh? I can't take all. It's like Buckley's cup syrup. You can't drink it all. You have to drink a little bit. Give me a little bit of small pin. Let me listen to this one of U.S. $250 and up. National Security Minister Stuart Young confirmed that the National Security Forces are aware of these operations, and he says it is not just non-nationals on the radar. It is Trinidad and Tobagoonians who are part of this. We have locals, Trinidadians, who are part of these organizations engaging in the importation of illegal immigrants and facilitating it. The police service is going to be investigating these instances and charging persons for it. In fact, Young says persons were caught red-handed in the act of human trafficking. We have picked up on that. So that gentleman, who's the Minister of National Security, who wap wap became the world's worst Minister of National Security one time, he didn't even stick. He didn't even pretend that he was going to try and be good. He gets silver and bronze one time, 519 murders, bam, 538. And if COVID didn't happen, he might have gone 568. He would have passed Martin Joseph 2008, 558, going clear. The man has done nothing. The borders have been porous. Yeah, men like Ian Allen, who here, and he said, good evening to Ian Allen, who doing more crime fighting on his show with limited resources, holding people and catching them in the act, and that man only walking around with bulletproof vests and waving. Remember when Jesus came into Damascus? People were waving, and they were waving palms and so on. You know the donkey Jesus was writing on thought that they was waving at he too? You know that? Right? Same thing with Stuart Young walking with Gary waving, like people waving at him. But nobody here waving at you, boy, small pin. Only Asha Javid, and she waving from below. <laughs> so, this man, we have 14 vessels every time I go fishing. All of them pack up. He and Rowley don't even want to buy diesel, don't even want to buy gas for the ships to go out and patrol. That man who shut down the air guard, because they may want to buy gas to the plane, or new planes, or maintenance. That man who shut down the helicopters because the fuel too expensive. That man who take down the communication when Kamala was there. 
If you make a call, nine, what rabbit responds so? 999, everybody hear you. So all kind of man, helicopter in the air, police, fast, rapid response, uh, ambulance, fire, everybody on the same come. Them find that was too expensive. They cut all of that. The border open, porous. Like if you just do a facial and your pores open, people coming in from all over, people coming in to sell fish in Shagaramas, and now he blaming all you. He say, y'all citizens, y'all, I'm going to lock y'all up. Well, let me tell y'all something. The, the incompetence of that individual, he better be careful that he don't get locked up because to leave the borders open, wide open like that, and then to allow fishermen, I thought Chung from the USA told business people do not do business with Venezuela because you're risking sanctions. Didn't she tell us that? So who buying all that Venezuelan fish, 10 boats, 15 boats per day, 8 Venezuelan people coming in, no mask, no swab, no, they don't even squeeze their nose, there are no security, them going in massy stores and buying corn curl and corn beef, right through. Them walk with COVID. The rest of the COVID down with the fish and gone back down the way. And this man blaming all you. Play the next piece. Villains who are illegal immigrants and they are going to be charged. The police shall be charging them. Right now, in accordance with health protocols, we have them in quarantine and they will be facing the criminal charges that they deserve. A close eye is also being kept on fishermen and other persons with operations close to the sea. An active investigation is taking place with respect to that and I've also asked that if they're local Trinidadian businessmen who are facilitating the breach of regulations by permitting persons to disembark and permitting persons to come off these vessels into Trinidad without permission and none of them have permission, that those drivers... <laughs> And what about the people who have the whole south coast from Ikakas to Fullerton, the whole Shagaramas, the whole coast? What about the person who have it open? You studying after they reach? What about the man who have it open? But Delcy reach, eh? Um, and Delcy and we did not know I don't drill down. Every time he lie, right? And let's do this, right? What about him? And y'all want to vote for that? Are y'all very serious? Who is responsible? What is your work, sir? You just come to attack citizens again? You attack Barbados? You attack citizens, 33 in Barbados, 19 in, in uh, Margarita, 35 in Suriname, all across the board, a little old lady, Miss Pantin, want to come home, she losing her mind, you attack she? That's all you can do? You are bullied just like your bullet, brethren. But notice, bullet, I thought I'd tell you, I tell you, I dare you, bullet, you're going back virtual. I said, say these words. Say, Anil Roberts thief money from lives. What one you fright now? And bullet, and you burn. Don't tell me about innuendo and lies, but say the words and let me walk you up the steps after Munilal. By the time we're done with you, all one oil gas you have, we go take all. So you go ahead, keep playing your games. The, now, if all you don't even play the third part, I cannot even take that small pin no more. All right, just seeing a small pin does get me upset. Imagine the prime minister lists ten major projects, ladies and gentlemen, that his government has done. Well, I did not know we could have done this ceremony, eh, lad. I didn't know we could have done this because when we finish government, we are a thing so stuck. Ministry of Housing, Ministry of Sport, Ministry of Health. Ministry of Science and Tertiary, Ministry of the People, Ministry of Justice, Ministry of National Security, Ministry of Culture, Ministry of all kind of things, just achievement, 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 complete. If thing wasn't complete, we ain't put it. So when Tim Gopi Singh built 106 school, it was 106 complete school. We didn't include the 62, that was 95%, 80%, 82%, we didn't even put that. Look what Rowley is saying, his 10 projects are, and I can't make this up, you know. All you don't laugh when I read it, it's all, yeah? That the Prime Minister, yeah. Even though it has not yet paid for the lands, the government is forging ahead to build a 62 million grant chairman fishing facility. Keith Rowley said, the facility was one of 10 major projects the government embarked on, despite economic, hard economic times. Them, know, them ain't buy the land yet, you know. Them saying that is a project them do. 
Debe ir Mari. Debe ir Mari. Oh, you want to say what I tell you? No, no. I, I cannot I continue. No, I feel a lie, you know. These projects were paid for through private sector loans and were either completed or in various stages of completion. <laughs> the man tried to tell you, we do 10 projects in five years. But we are complete none, eh? But they're in various stages. One of them, we are in by the land. We just dig a spade. So that start. So you count that, you know, because a spade dig. You understand? And this man telling all you vote for he. I, go, I continue, I'm very sorry. They include the Brian Lara Stadium. He proudly finished the Brian Lara Stadium. The thing was budgeted in 2004 at 175 million. He spent 19 million to paint, 17 million for Colm Imbert, the Dwayne Dweet wife, the, the power wash, and then opened that thing and had three match day at 1.32 billion dollars. When Kamala went in there, I asked Munilal, at Unicut, I said, boss man, how much is that stadium? Because remember the report with the engineer when they say all the wells and the, the, the roof might fall down on people and think, how much? Munilal and them hire engineer experts and think, come back with a tick report. So six months later, it say you need 210 million. I say, Munilal, but I feel that got a rest because we had a choice to make. I say, Munilal, if I could get 200 million from the cabinet, I feel I should spend it on 90 grounds across Trinidad and Tobago rather than one thing. <laughs> and Munilal say, why? That much better. And that's what? It's a simple decision. Give the people what they need, what they want, more people. That, them boasting, them finish that stupid thing for three cr cricket match. Do you know all the other stadia in Grenada, Antigua, Dominica, Jamaica, Trelawney, and so on? The average cost per seat is 5,000 US. You know what is the average cost per seat in Rowley, PNM, Taruba Stadia? 125,000 US per seat. And when they play a CPL match there two years ago and it rained, all the women make up on the eyelash and thing wash off. At first I say, but what up we move? I said the game moved from Trinidad because when we start up, if you see sweet woman in the crowd, after the rain, I say, oh God! <laughs> the Guardian so want to push. They're pushing hard now. They're pushing hard. They realize Rowley gone through. They realize that Ansa McCall will have to account for all our profits they make all over the, the five years of Rowley. They're averaging 1.6 billion. Well, they're going hard now. They put a whole PNM Jamaican woman on the morning brew. If any of you watch, I say, you go and watch Stefan Reese and them in the morning breaking down on Synergy. Eh? You understand? Go and watch that. Because if all you supporting Kamala, UNC, Munilal, Anil, and all you watch that PNM thing, all you have no shame. Let them feel it. Let their ratings go zoop. And they want to go PNM. You know them hire Winfra James too. Them take PNM ballhead Winfra James from the Express too. Guardian going strong. Look at them now. The whole country knows for certain that Stuart Smallpin Young is the worst minister in national security in history. He's total incompetent his incompetence personified the borders we had no community spread so they say from the testing we had nothing we good we locked down we put people out of work single mothers suffer people hungry people starving but at least we say boy we had no covid but covid coming through 140 points from all over south america coming covid coming all up in wk packs from all around he come out two days ago and ball. Um, could we get some information, please? Y'all help me, help me, start to cry. You know the Guardian say, like he they put a headline, rapid response, like he do a good work? Because somebody call and they catch 30. Yes, you caught 30, but 300 pass. But the Guardian say he did good, right? Trinidad and Tobago Coast Guard is concerned over Venezuelan influx. Members of the Trinidad and Tobago Coast Guard are now raising concerns over the influx of illegal immigrants into Trinidad and Tobago, mostly from Venezuela, saying that they are posing a major health risk in coastal communities and for officers during the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic. And this is what Rowley put the all the egg in the COVID basket, you know. He said, don't worry, I know I was incompetent. I know my entire cabinet is a bunch of dunce. We did bad on everything, but hold up. 
When COVID came, we took the principle of we test no one, we have no COVID. And we confused you all with the media, and we got an Oxford report from two students who can't even spell Trinidad nor Tobago, and they said we were number one, even though they did no analysis whatsoever, and any scientific analysis don't even put us in the top 150, but Rowley tell you all he did well. So forget that I was incompetent, forget that all the money blow by we, we kept tight control of it, forget all of that. Because it's them Indian who thief, right? The only two honest Indian is in the PNM, Rohan and Franklin Khan. But every road Rohan build does end up by he. And every building Franklin Khan have, he does get rent for. But there is the two only in there. Oh, I forget. Faris al Rawi, you is not no, no but you the Indian boy, Sukaran. I forget. You nearly confused me, Johnny Sukaran. Eh? Why you don't like to be Indian? Let the Indian tell you, you is an Indian too, right? You see the Dogla can talk anything. Only it's nice to be a Dogla. No? The concern came even as Venezuelans and Trinidadians were held in carnage during a joint ex exercise. Two people had already jumped into the sea and escaped. So like George Bovell and, and Michael Phelps jump out the boat and swim ashore, you know them escape? Suppose them two had COVID now. S. Stuart Young, yesterday the Trinidad and Tobago Coast Guard officer speaking on condition of anonymity said from June to last weekend, they detained close to 200 Venezuelan nationals. And remember, who we detain is the tip of the iceberg, you know. When you detain 200, you could extrapolate that 800 pass, right? Having these people there, it's too risky for us because we are the ones that have to take their vitals every morning and our lives are at more risk too. And they keep coming in by large numbers on boats, some of them which go undetected when they may make landfall. They spread out throughout Trinidad and Tobago community spread en masse. I feel it is inevitable. Now, the officer said, that is small pin young's incompetence even his officers are showing that he has shown no care why you didn't gas up them vessels long time if you didn't want them working all the time why not when you locked down on march 22nd why you didn't do that run the video there archie kamla because you all said that kamla pnm say kamla says she go open borders all you stop lying now kamla said Quite simply, our citizens belong home. And just like every other nation, especially in the developed world, she will repatriate our citizens through the closed border with proper monitoring, confirmed mandatory quarantine signed before they get on the plane so that the Alsing car cry when they reach people not listening to me. Who would listen to you? You talk like a convent girl anyway, nobody are taking you on, right? So understand this. Kamala said she is keeping the borders closed. Our citizens will come home, quarantine 14 days, full testing, everything, but they will be home. We will not leave them out stranded like vagrants without food, with no country. The borders will remain closed. There will be no opening of the border for no CPL or nothing like that. And she will close the porous borders by putting the Coast Guard vessels out there, putting the army down on the, the southern coast from the carcass to Fullerton, putting vehicles down there, not one 4x4, 24x4s with full floodlights, put the, the customs and immigration down there and get the border sealed tight. Run it and show the lady. Present to them an entire plan of how we will deal with the threat from the COVID. Of course, he abandoned and threw everything apart praises himself for treating with COVID. They had no plan pre-COVID, no plan during COVID, and no plan post-COVID. Hundreds of illegal fellas coming through, and then you're going to bring hundreds more to play cricket with the CPL. But our own citizens, no, you can't come home. Now is the time to get TNT working again. On August 10th, vote UNC. Exactly, vote UNC and the COVID-19. Rowley himself, worse than COVID-19, you know. Play it, Archie, we're going quick. We have Munilal to interview, you know. We don't have time to stick. Play the next one. Rowley, use COVID-19, man. Show is, Keith Rowley loves to tell lies. The government is not closing down Petrotrin. All the, the, the employees of, of Petrotrin will be, will exit the company all 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 
always wash your ears after listening to Keith Rowley speak. Wear a mask at all times, so you can express yourself freely without Keith Rowley seeing and then attacking you like he does with the media and anyone who criticizes him. But I'm not going to sit here and let the press conferences become you coming here as accredited press people and you have imps outside. Lastly, there is one known cure for Rowley 19, staining your finger and voting him out on election day. Let's save our nation before it's too late. That is some serious advice. On the morning of August 10, wake up early, say your prayers, wash your hands clean, go to the polling station and vote out Rowley with a vengeance from Tobago East, Tobago West, from Matlot, Toko Sangri Grandi, straight down in Tunapuna, Sawa Barataria, St. Joseph, San Fernando West, Maruga Tableland, La Brea Point up here, and all in between. Vote out Rowley across Trinidad and Tobago. And this is why. Rowley again last night. I don't know. I don't think there's one person in Trinidad and Tobago except Rowley who feel he does talk the truth. Rowley does wake up in the night, go to the bathroom, watch himself and say, boy, Rowley, you's really such a nice fellow, you's talk the truth, you know. And you know the reflection as look back at him and go, <laughs> Hey, Rowley, he said opposition leader Kamala Pasadbi says I was never seen with her mask on. And if she'd worn one, it would have sent a message that this was what people needed to do to protect themselves. Even the Guardian had to intersplice. Hey, the Guardian. Well, Rowley continued, I call upon her to stop undermining my advice of COVID, man, you big boy. Eddie Guardian, Posad Bissessa wore a mask during campaigning in Maruga, Maruga Table and Constituency all day yesterday. Rowley, stop telling lies, son. Play the I'll sing now the convent girl. Now, if you all understand this one, I want you all to come and whisper in the Dogla ears because I, too dotish, to understand what this drug is saying because he's not a pharmacologist because I asked him if he have a pharmacology degree and I'm yet to hear it. I know that he has Dr. Envy. He's look across on the UNC side and when he see Dr. Tim Gopi Singh, Dr. Lacrambodo, Dr. 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 Munilal, Dr. He, he know he's not bright enough to be a doctor. I know son, but not everybody could be bright. We need people like you, D.R. Singh, to know that we bright. Without notice, people, how we gonna know we bright? Play him now. I don't understand, but play him. Um, as to whether we're in a second wave, we have to be careful how we describe things as waves or peaks. We need to get more information from the contact tracing to determine whether this is a second wave, if it's a peak, a wave as described by WHO. The, or the end of a wave is when you go down to as close to zero as possible. So at one point in time, and Dr. Hines and Dr. Nandram are free to, uh, to voice their concerns, we did go down very close to zero. Um, we have seen an upward tick. These cases may not represent a peak at this point in time. The last big peak we had was when we had the cruise ship cohort 71% of roughly 68 people turning, neg uh, turning positive. That was a huge peak. So what we are seeing is possibly um, a second wave, but we are going to wait for the, for the studies coming out of Dr. Heinz's activities to determine whether this is a second wave or the start of a second peak. Anybody? I don't know where to start. First of all, for a better part of seven weeks, between March 14th and May 4th, didn't he tell us, we are giving you the statistics, we have X amount of positives and so on, but we take it away from the ones who have quarantined because they were on a, a cruise ship and we don't consider those to be statistics to be added to our numbers here on community spread and internet and debate. You all don't remember that? Yeah. Now we balling, oh God, we had a peak, it was on the ship. <laughs> nice one. Number two, we had a, a first wave, we didn't have no wave. The only wave we had was this. 
what we test you see everything is unraveling my people we never knew what was here what wasn't here whether it was a wave whether it was tyrico whether it was a ripple whether it was a tick look he want to put front line on the covid now because he balling it had tick die for dog what are you talking about and if it's a peak and a wave but we locked down we shut down bars we shut down restaurants we stopped daily paid workers from making money we shut down maxi we shut down taxi we shut down badgy cells we shut down doubles man we shut down, shut down corn soup we shut down market we shut down everything we locked down the borders and leave with people out crying and starving and both them so where the wave come from it flying on kobo but you see, it's not funny because they were lying to y'all all the time. And August 10th, they come in to say vote for them. They come in to say vote for them again. Play Dr. Tim Gopi Singh because there's a doctor. There's a doctor. These are people who take their time and study hard. Make their mind up. But they, they drink coffee whole night. Ask Munilal. Munilal do masters in law on top of masters on top of law degree. All at the same time as being a minister. The man asleep. That is bright people who could take pressure. This convent girl could not even get a pharmacology degree. And he in charge of all your life. All your really serious. This thing is not no joke. We had Dr. Fuad Khan. Play, play Dr. Tim. Permit me to offer proof of this Rowley's dangerous Rowley's government failed COVID-19 testing policy. The latest re-emergence of COVID-19 positive patients in Trinidad and Tobago strongly indicates that prior COVID positive community cases have remained undetected for the last few months. This is a serious indictment on Prime Minister Dr. Keith Rowley and Health Minister Dr. Terence Dialsing. It shows that they unashamedly engaged in serious misrepresentation and deceit when they claimed that the health ministry had undertaken necessary widespread community testing for the disease. In fact, this very limited testing was only being done at predetermined health centers determined by the Ministry of Health. Since March, the UNC has repeatedly voiced of a strongest condemnation of the Rowley government's failed national COVID-19 testing. In five months, they have conducted only about 6,200 tests, a mere 0.04% of the population, ranked as one of the worst per capita population nationwide as far as testing is concerned. Many citizens were experiencing mild to moderate COVID-19 related symptoms, but preferred to remain at home suffering at home because of the inhumane and inhospitable quarantine conditions at various quarantine facilities as de depicted by the media and on social media. Testing was done at CAFA and later, two months later, at the university center. Despite persistent false posts by Minister Dial Singh of them being able to conduct testing at hospitals as well, this never happened. The daily arrival of illegal immigrants, Venezuelan immigrants, with Minister Stuart Young as the hopeless, loquacious national security minister, actively worsened the deadly COVID-19 infection risks in Trinidad and Tobago's, to Trinidad and Tobago citizens. Consultant internal medical specialists have indicated that more than 500 patients have died with pneumonia and serious respiratory signs and symptoms over the past few months, which are pathognomonic of COVID-19 without any tests being done on these patients and when they became corpse, corpses. The health ministry apparently undertook a deliberate policy of hiding the real diagnosis and the real incidence of the serious morbidity and mortality of the COVID-19 disease nationally. In the past few months, these senior medical consultants have been having difficulty in managing new types of long complications of patients emanating for the first time, almost certainly secondary to COVID-19 infections and unreported, which remained unreported and undetected earlier. The entire COVID-19 sham testing fiasco 
is proof that the dangerous Rowley government undertook a policy of serious lies, misrepresentation, and blatant national deceit to cover up their gross incompetence. <laughs> They have now placed citizens' lives in serious danger and the entire of Trinidad and Tobago citizenry in terrible danger. So on August 10th, you have no option but to vote them out and vote it. Thank you. And let me tell you all, I know it's a bit difficult because me and Bright like he either, but we had to listen and understand. But let me break it down for you because me and Bright like that. There was one news report in about March, March 27th, April 5th, somewhere around there, that stated that between January and April, it was April, early April, that there were 496 deaths with pneumonia, respiratory deaths. I did some research to see what was the 10-year norm for that period, the average amount. And the average deaths was about 130. So I would ask the question, what could account for such an increase? Over 360 from respiratory pneumonia type lung disease. But you all said it had no COVID. Never mind the first person who died from COVID here in Trinidad and Tobago was liming in Panyard and all over the place for carnival. But I ain't saying nothing because the media telling y'all and turn this pandemic thing in some kind of joke, some kind of political game. And I know health is not about no politics, but all you want to play that. Health is about science. Look, Dr. Bratt, from one doctor, let me go to another doctor because I am not a doctor. Please put up Dr. Bratt for my people, please. Dr. Bratt in today's papers wrote an entire article and, and the essence of it is at the rate we are testing, it's difficult to know about what is going on in the community. Barbados is at 40,000 tests per million population and Grenada is at 48,000 tests per million. Mauritius, another island with a similar population and much less money has a rate of 161,400 tests per million. They have done 205,285 tests since their outbreak began around the same time in March. We have tested less than 5,000 people. This is not a game. I don't know where you all find this thing funny. Even the most fanatical PLM sycophant should be saying, Dial Singh, are you all mad? All you playing with my family, my granny, my tante? This is not no joke. Actually, pop the graph if you have it for me. I pop a graph for you all do graph politics a while ago that Vishnu Kun Kun do for me. To try to explain to all you. Look at that. The orange, look at your screen carefully, shows the number of tests done in certain countries of a similar population to Trinidad and Tobago. Trinidad and Tobago is on the bottom. You see that little bit of orange? That's the number of tests we did. I think the top is Jamaica, the second one is Estonia, and the third one, I forget who it was, Equatorial Guinea. Equatorial Guinea. Not known for no bastion of, of, of efficiency and management style. Look at Trinidad and Tobago. And these people come to talk to you each day. I don't know about you know, just take a panadol or aspirin and go and sleep. Because it is not funny. And that's why August 10th, you have to put qualified people. Kamala's problem is, she had too many doctors. She don't know which one to choose as a minister. But it don't matter. Because it have minister, it have advisor, it have medical team it have everything to handle covid to build hospital to get um, medical tourism going to create jobs because the unc works together as a team the pnm couldn't even find one doctor to swear in or they don't find that worry you know I and they can't even find one so all the intelligent people run from them look who they find
going to be Attorney General, a man who that man never win a case down here. The man lost 29 straight. If my daughter who's five lost 29 straight in anything, I say, girl, just study your books and forget sport, yes? Just be bright because you really ain't good, no big thing. Everybody can't be good. The man lost 29 straight and telling all in San Fernando West, my track record as Attorney General will make you vote for me. But what? The man lost everything. But yet, COVID, eh? People dead in, eh? But look what Rowley going ahead with. CPL boy, open the borders and let foreigners from all over the world come in with more COVID on top of the porous borders, on top of the illegal immigrants. Open the border and let them in, but don't let our citizens in under PAHO, WHO, COVID quarantine uh, protocol. Don't let our citizens home. But he pay a million US to make zero money. Oh, you understand that? The man pay a million US for no benefit. He say we are going to market. What are we going to market? We makes nothing, we builds nothing, we grows nothing, we sells nothing since Rowley. So what are we marketing? Nothing. Oh Lord. I don't know what to say again. I ain't taking no break, you know, because I'm Munilal and I'm going to interview, interview Munilal long. Share the life. Munilal has taken no half hour interview, you know. Munilal has talked more than me. So we come down in the lions, then we go in and interview the lion. Me ain't taking no break until the lion comes. All your beats up, just give me some energy, man. <laughs> I'm a little break, we're ready to go. Imagine the commissioner of police who is now doing the minister of national security work because the borders pour us, but you're hearing police hold 18 Venezuelans in Tobago, police hold 32 in Carnage, police hold 30 in South, police hold. So Gary Griffith doing small pin work, but Convan Geldi Singh not talking to Gary Griffith. And you all find that you all feel safe. The minister without a degree of health is not talking to your commissioner of police in order to protect us. Do you all think that's a good situation? All you feel the dogla make it up? A lie. All you feel because I ball it, a lie like Rowley? Okay, let me read it from the papers then. Griffith says, Captain Gary Griffith says, include me in COVID-19 talks please. Commissioner of Police, I echo, Gary Griffith says he has been trying to contact Health Minister Terence Dialsing for days, describing some of the ministry's actions at, as hypocrisy. He said the police are here to enforce laws and feels he should at least be included at the forefront of the discussions surrounding the pandemic. Don't you think he should be included? I can guarantee you that Kamala Prasad Bissessa's Minister of Health, whoever he or she may be, will include the Commissioner of Police in any discussion about COVID-19, protocol, protection, porous borders, illegal immigrants, and keeping our people safe. It is a critical independent arm of the state and must be communicated with. So I don't know what Convan Gill problem is. He only running down Alloy Hunt up there, but he eight points behind already. Too late, uh, too late shall be the cry. You need to put a little screen more on your face and put some sunscreen, Convan Gill, because that licking you're going to get is not going to be finger licking good because it's coming from Royal Castle because that's what we need. All you it's all you want to put mute in COVID-19 thing and, and politicize chicken. And then he say he didn't really get advanced information even though he was on the inside and truck was pulling up and stocking up while Royal Castle couldn't get no chicken. Japs fried chicken and, and, and Darren's couldn't get no chicken. So since all you politicize it, the dogla is UNC, I only eat in Royal Castle. Here Griffith. Griffith said on Monday, I heard the Minister of Health speak today, and he said, communication is the key, said Gary Griffith. It's very interesting the Minister of Health stated this, because a few days now, I've asked him to contact me, and he said he is busy. The Minister of Health is busy 
trying to get votes now after not performing for five years and Alloy Hunt come and gunning him away in St. Joseph. He's so busy studying Alloy Hunt, he not studying all your dead in. And he would not even have time to meet with the commissioner of police. So who is all there out there? Y'all really think y'all should vote for that? No. I, I hear all the dead. For several days, I've asked to meet the chief medical officer. He has refused to meet with the commissioner of police. I would ask the Minister of Health to take his own advice and use communication as a key to ensure whatever steps they recommend, the police can adhere to them and assist. That's a very serious thing, you know. But it's up to you all. You all will decide August 10th. I wait for your vote. The Minister of National Security small pin. <laughs> After the cat done bold, the horse done bold. After illegal immigrants coming in here, flooding in here, three years before COVID, five months during COVID, now COVID start to spread like wildfire. The, the, the minister and national security come down and crying, y'all help me please call 555. And we wish we could call 555 to get you 555 fired. You understand? But that Minister Smallpin, that is like putting on a prophylactic after your wife done five months pregnant. That is your policy. Huh? Are you serious? Your wife belly done swell and you now putting on prophylactic, boy? Boy, come out the people of this man. Aha. Yeah, they like that one. All right. Make some noise, boy. Hey. Hear this one. Now this video, this video was really from 2010. While you look at it, you should really think about 2015 because the video is more apt to 2015 than 2010. So understand what the Douglas saying. I'm going to play a video, right? It originally was filmed or filmed as my former member Nylon Hippolyte from Lavati West and the PNM used to say, we watch the film in Parliament. I said, where you say the boss? He said, yes, the film. The film it. I said, then what? The man was serious. He wasn't joking. Eh? So I go say, well, we go in and watch the film. And we watching this film. This was film in 2010. But I wanted to watch it and think about 2015. Archie, Jed, they could take. Tears and disbelief at Balize House on Monday evening. The reality that the party they had supported for decades had lost the general election was beginning to sink in. Many stared at the electronic screens as the results began to come in. By 10 o'clock, many had already realized that the party was not in a good position. For some young voters, a PNM defeat they believe jeopardizes their chances at a tertiary level education. My children cry. My children cry. Imagine that. Because people of Trinidad right decide to play russian roulette and play games with a children future time will tell and god will sleep all i want to know is how i get into the school because i'm going to close down all the new program and then for all of you send me and nothing to get you others dealt with their emotions much differently this supporter criticized the media for the election outcome and we hope the so-called free press will stand by and be responsible for what they have done as their political leader, Patrick Manning, addressed a small crowd who had gathered to listen to a victory speech rather than one of defeat, the tears could not be held back, but they all rallied behind their leader. For CNC3, I'm Kamal Georges. Well, in 2010, Chad, Kamala opened the gate, Chad, of the tech work, of the masters, of the PhD, of the open people. Kamala opened the textbooks. Kamala made MIC centers with David Lee under Fazal Karim. Built 12 MIC centers, 8 NESC centers, increased COSTAT funding, increased UTT funding. Built 106 schools with Tim Gopi Singh. Increased textbook funding up to 133 million. Kamala gave laptops for children. Kamala gave increased school feeding for children by 45 million. They Tim Gopi Singh and Kamala were giving out 89,000 meals per day 
Oh Lord Zed, Kamala didn't take nothing Zed. Kamala opened youth camp all in Chatham all over the country. Kamala opened <laughs> education. Kamala give you all kind of things. Kamala give you a certification if it's a carpenter, a seamstress, a tailor. You could get a piece of paper to go in the bank and get a loan Zed. Kamala open agriculture, increase agriculture budget by one billion Zed. It had more farming Zed, more loans Zed, more houses Zed. Munilala them build 8,000 houses for year Zed. But look what happened Zed. 2015 Zed. Rowley cut the textbooks by 130, cut sport by 130, which is what 650 million Zed. Children's life fund, he cut, cut he saved 130 lives less than Kamala. He, he 225 million less in school feeding than Kamala. He take away all the laptops. He took 500 million worth of textbooks, Jed. He cut URP by 80 million a year, Jed. He cut CPEP down from when Munirala added up at 800 million with X amount of workers. He cut that in half, Jed. He cut UTT and Mashita. He closed five MIC centers, Jed. Nine NESC centers. He cut food card from 42,000, Jed, down to 18,000. He cut he cut what in school? Pan in schools, and at least he cut PNM in schools. That would have been good. He cut pan in school program. He cut jobs in the economy by 103,000. He cut out petrol train. He cut special needs grant from schools, Jed. He cut autism grant from poverty. He cut and destroyed the sea bridge, Jed. So vote Kamala, Jed. You understand? <laughs> And if all you is sure, if the vote Kamala, and if she talk and make a speech and 33 times say blank and call Rowley a blank man, say he blank citizens, he blank the treasury, he blank food, he blank schools, he blank sport, he blank football, he blank cricket, he blank housing. If she say that and you all say she say black, now I would have buffed Kamala if she called Rowley black. I would have think that would have been an affront to me. Because nothing about Rowley Black. <laughs> Rowley? What about Rowley Black? I'm a, I'm a black man and I'm proud of could call me black. But, um, Achi, show me how the PNM treats black people. Let's see if all of social media and the media goes wild. Dr. Bisnu Ragunath. Look at this down in point 14, a former mayor treating a citizen like this. Let's and turn up the volume loud, let the people hear. No? This happened in point 14 yesterday. Run the track. What's it for me, guy? You. What's it for me, guy? If you're not like black people, what's it for me? Are you going to like black people? 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 A big rum drinking thing here, the PLM officer, a big rum drinking thing. Let me shut your ass. A big rum drink, go from here. 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 That's former PNM mayor. May I add? The video was sideways. Nobody can just turn your head so. <laughs> but I saw it straight up. That's former mayor Clyde Paul talking to a young black artist who came to discuss music. You see, the PNM had one song. Munilala had four songs. The Lion alone had four songs. Kamala and the UNC have about 20 songs. We know which one to play at what time. We have Chutney, we have Soka, we have Kaiso, we have Rock and Roll, we have Hip Hop, we have Zessa. We have all kind of tune because everybody go on UNC. But that's a former mayor. You can rotate it, actually, you are asking you too much. We're going to watch it correct now, you know. Yeah. What's it for, Vika? You. What's it for, Vika? If you are you going to like black people, what's it for? Are you going to like black people? Like people? Oh. A big rum drinking thing here, the PLM officer. A big rum drinking thing. Let me shut your ass. A big rum drink. What's going on here? Go from here. Go and take a drink. Go put some water in the office.
Great is the PNM. Great mayor behavior. Telling young black people to shut their what? What? Crocro? Crocro, is that you? Crocro, you saw sure? you sure somebody didn't drive past an Indian cause you? Eh? You saw sure Indian didn't call you something, Crocro? I see no Indian there. You know you like to blame Indian, eh, Crocro? Sing our next guy, so. Say the Dogla, the Dogla racist, the Dogla. The Dogla don't like African. Crocro, you have no shame. That is the PNM. But then I tell you all, you all thought I'm not joking, you know. When I tell you all pressure in point 14, all you thought is joke I'm making. Pressure does bust pipe. They cussing, they unraveling, they drinking rum early. They didn't them supposed to be campaigning. That was all 11.35 a.m. They may meet a pale out yet. But that's all right. Now listen to this. Now again, ready for Monila. Let me check my time here because I'm going to cut all this rest. But this part here, very important. All right. Archie, I do not know, ladies and gentlemen, where the PNM found this fella called Keith Rowley. I really do not know. I think we have to come up with new adjectives. Pathological does not work. I told y'all on, on Sunday in Tunapuna, I simply read out for y'all the Commonwealth Heads of Government uh, guidelines for conduct of observers from the Commonwealth Secretariat. None of the daily newspapers, no CNC3 Balize House and Rise, no TV6 PNM Balize Jews, none of them want to just show the truth. Because a Prime Minister said, and I quote, that he invited the Commonwealth Secretariat and they told him, one, it's too costly, they can't come. Two, they may not be able to get a flight. <laughs> but CPL people can get a flight. Eh? The Commonwealth Secretariat that have heads of government and former prime ministers and them can't get no, them had their money in pounds, them can't get no flight. And then three, that the COVID protocols would be too long, 14 days, but CPL cricketers can get seven days. So you're cutting it short to play some cricket games that we here make no money on to open the borders for CPL, for them to bring COVID to kill we people. But you will not open it and ensure observers. But none of the newspapers went and researched the guidelines. They leave it as Rowley say and Kamala say. So now Kamala Pasad Bissessa said, well, Dr. Rowley, please, Show us the letter, one that you wrote inviting, asking the um, Commonwealth Secretary at the Queen's Council, Miss Scotland, to send observers. And two, the letter that she wrote stating, we have no money. Isn't that a fair question? Yeah. Wouldn't you all as citizens want to know yeah. that, uh, that uh, the Prime Minister would show you that, wouldn't you? Isn't that normal procedure? I mean, he's working for you all. You all is the duly elected Prime Minister, servant of the people. Well, let us see what Dr. Keith Christopher Rowley's response was. And if anybody could vote for this gentleman after this response, I wish you all all the best. Archie, please play it. Thank you. I know they're talking about if, if, um, if, 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 if observers don't come, it's my fault. And with your outer placeness, I must show her the letter that the Commonwealth replied saying that they can't afford to send people here for 14 days quarantine well i'm showing nobody any letter i'm telling you the people of Trinidad and Tobago that the commonwealth told us that it is too expensive for them to undertake that mission and so therefore they will take a pass on it and i know that you will accept that from a prime minister who always tells you the truth Archie, play it again. Play it again, Archie. Play it again. I know they're talking about if, if, um, if, 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 if observers don't come, it's my fault. And with your outer placeness, I must show her the letter that the Commonwealth replied saying that they can't afford to send people here for 14 days quarantine. Well, I'm showing nobody any letter. I'm telling you, the people of Trinidad and Tobago, that the Commonwealth told us that it is too expensive for them to undertake 
that mission and so therefore they will take a pass on it and I know that you will accept that from a Prime Minister who always tells you the truth let me just quickly as I get ready for the lion eh? let me just quickly read for you from the Commonwealth observers guidelines I have the entire thing here okay but I'm just gonna read section 8 for you all it's clear just bear with me okay Eight financial 8.1 the Commonwealth remains committed to funding its own election observation recognizing its work in this field as a core activity in promoting Commonwealth values and principles the costs of each observer mission are covered by the secretary at oh my goodness Rowley did Rowley say that he's a prime minister who always tells the truth Okay, every anybody have a stop watch on the phone or clock. I want you all to set it, put it on clock. I want to see back again. Is somebody scream out, Rabbi? When when it reach, when it reach two minutes, I have to stop. I'm going for two minutes. I'm going to try and squeeze in all the lie that come out of my. I didn't research. I just pulled this out of my brain onto this paper. Are you all ready with the stopwatch? When I say go, you start it. Whenever it reach two minutes, just scream out and it'll stop, stop, stop. Are you all ready? Yeah. Somebody say go. go. Rowley, lies. I did not want this job. Not closing Petro Train. Email gate. Shanghai construction is corrupt undermining. EMBD cartel. Three million in a trunk going to a pa people partnership. Uh, minister. Delcy and Pedevesa. Bridgeman's was crooked money, but it went through the proper cabinet process. When Del Mockley not in charge of Sanders. Anand is a racist in Washington. Greenville was a UNC project under Muniland. Chinese. Housing content, contract, I had nothing to do with that. Grabby Wabi did not grab no pum pum. CNC3, I did not negotiate gas price. We best in COVID out of Oxford. Port board formed no vessels in September 2018. Galleon's Passage was not a fast ferry. Galleon's Passage was rarely purchased for the Toko port. Sanders left because Anil and Skippy and Watson Duke was bad talking them. Manning was corrupt for meeting one CEO. I fired Marlene because of the perception of connection to criminal elements, but I did not fire myself. But I continued to line with Maduro. Kamala plays race politics. Board of Petrotrin said close on Petrotrin. Unicot not under OPM when Munilal asked him in Parliament with, with the NCB Global Finance and Angus Young. Lied about giving would get limited outline approval in Renaissance in 2003. I still waiting for him to take me to court 10 years now. Bridgeman's normal cabinet process. Beat up wastewater. I never had any interest with any businessman. Jackie Lazarus was not put on any board. Kamala did not build 106 schools. CPL to restart the economic engine. Life sport balloon from 6 million to 400 million and therefore corruption, corruption. Galicia wanted the whole country to ransom and refused to tender. They tendered twice, won twice and it was scuttled. We did not sell gasolina to Venezuela. The UN treaty overrides Rio treaty. UNC shutting down water in St. Joseph, Tunama, Puna and Sawa to win election. Tobago better off at the table with PNM. Manning and Chinese were well, only wanted. Two minutes, two minutes. And I still have more. Ah, can't take no more. That was two minutes. Rowley, that is more than you and Small Pink are doing two minutes, boy. I said, Javi, how are you going? Yeah. Yeah, next thing quick. As you get ready for Munila, run the Paris. Paris, what is this about cotton money? Cotton money. Paris, still alive like your prime minister. Let me have Paris. A la Rawi, a la rental, a la tight pants. Give me. Today, the WhatsApp message to the people of Trinidad and Tobago is the UNC, according to the message, will come with old hundred dollar notes, cotton notes, put it in your hand and say, when we come back in power, we're going to allow you to trade those notes. Yes, so wait, 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 some WhatsApp you get that time. Um, UNC going to give people cotton notes and tell them when we come back in power, we're going to re-monetize the, the... I mean, the man is a complete dunce. I don't know where to find him from. He lost 29 straight cases. You cannot re-monetize money that has been discarded. It's impossible, number one. Number two, the central bank governor is an independent office, not under the PNM, because all you move a good central bank governor and put a puppet who want to play national security, like he in the cabinet, 
Faris, I know you were you are a little shell shocked because you catered for three hundred people in your cocktail with Faris I'll rent a lot of tight pants. But women fed up by your tight pants, boy. Only fifteen people show up and twelve was man. <laughs> but Faris, but Faris, why are you talking? I find you talking stiff. I find you like you're trying to tense up and think Faris. Archie, run that clip again. Let me see and turn it up. Run the clip, boy. <laughs> And we hear in the lion's den because Moonilal is here to mash up the place. We coming back with Moonilal and before that, and before we come back with the lion in the lion's den, actually it had some fellas singing down for Rushton Parry. If all you feel the UNC is Indian, the UNC is Indian, African, Dogra, Chinese, Syrian, mix up. African with Orisha, with Baptist, Jara Safari, Hindu, Muslim, Buddha, Atheist, everybody in Trinidad and Tobago is United National Congress. Play the tune! We the pants away, I'm a big up the UNC. I'm a burn out Mr. Rowley. I say, me lift up man like Paris. Rust and Paris, say him come with the plan, yo. Say him is a frustration right now. Say him come with the plan for the nation, yo. Say me lift up the UNC. That's why me burn out your lead. Yeah, my be living in the poverty. Lift up the UNC. Oh, hey, hey, hey. When she call me the answer. I know she just like me, mama. Always have the answer. She says, stand for me, son, here. Yeah. And come and bust a little chant, yeah. New with the future. And you saw me big up the UNC. Yeah, for preparation for me. Yes, and welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. We are here in the lion's den. Here now. Hey, DJ. I see Mooney Lal have a big tune. From a DJ Bravo. I think it's Bravo number one hit. All you get up and make some noise for Runal Moonilal the Next member of parliament 
for our boots east once again, the Honorable Dr. Rula Muniran. Talk to the people. Thank you, thank you very much. Let us give Anil and Dogla Politics and his team a big or pushing This evening, we are very happy to be in private property at a private residence. We are not in a public space, but we observe all the health protocols, of course. And we are very happy to be in Kuchawan Trace an area that got national prominence for the last 20 years or so. And we are happy to welcome Dogla Politics. A special hello to all the people listening in throughout Trinidad and Tobago. We have viewers uh, in the United States and Canada. We have viewers in England, I believe, as well. From all over the world tuning in this evening. And uh, we are getting reports as we go along that on several of the feeds, whether it is the Ian Allen Network, Dogla Politics, Mr. Paradisi, uh, a television as well, channel, Sandia, we have now thousands and thousands of viewers at this time who are tuned in, and we want to thank all of you. I want to say a special thank you to former Minister of Sport and a diehard, one of the strongest, most courageous politicians you can find in the Caribbean, in Anil Robert. This evening, we are here to discuss serious issues. This is not meant to be a line. Last week, Friday, the Prime Minister took the youth and he had a lime. Yes, yes. So the youth, he want to be like the grandfather liming with the youth. But he liming with the youth when Kamala Prasad Bissessa wants to give the youth a job, to give them employment, to give the youth laptops. He just want to sit down Friday night and lime. That is not the prime minister we want. And tonight, I am so happy and proud to say that I have worked with Anil Roberts to help the young people of Trinidad and Tobago. Give him a round of applause. There are, about, there are about two or three issues I just wanted to raise very briefly before we interact. One, you all have been reading in the press, the PNM has as a major foundation in their campaign, a major foundation. When we were in government, people like Anil, myself, Tim Gopi Singh, Kamla Prasad, Bissessar, Suruj Rappachan, Fazal Karim, and others, we were always tripping over ourselves when the time comes for election. Everybody wants to talk. Why? They want to report on all the work they have done, how much lights we light up in, how much recreation ground, how much sporting teams we support. Many of you may not remember when we came in in 2010, Anil, it had a chicken company in India. Dwayne Bravo is here tonight. Give Dwayne Bravo a round of applause for coming out. There was a chicken company named Venkis in India supporting the Trinidad and Tobago cricket team in India. When they came, I believe, runners up in the inaugural IPL in India. It was for us, we were very grateful that this company in India adopted the team and paid. When we came into office, Kamla Prasad Bissessa took a decision that she did not want a company in India to be sponsored in Trinidad and Tobago. She said the red, white, and black must be sponsored by the government and the people of Trinidad and Tobago. And NGC became the official sponsor for Trinidad and Tobago Knight Rider team at that time. At that time, their team at that time. We took it upon ourselves. Today, when you go in the Oval, believe it or not, NGC is still involved. That was the legacy of the partnership government. So we have done a lot. They want now to, re to come back to something, a pillar of their um, campaign, corruption. You ever see every day they come in with that for five years, political harassment. I want to tell you, because Anil cannot and will not tell you, in five years since 2015 to today, no policeman, no policeman has ever questioned Anil Roberts on any single matter dealing with his former ministry, Ministry of Sports. No policeman ever questioned me. Anytime police come to me, it's to ask me where PNM living. <laughs> That's what they want to know. Nobody ever questioned me in five years. They went in my ministry. They questioned from the permanent secretary down to the tea lady. When they leave, they leave with important information. 
I just drink black coffee with one sweetener. That's the information they leave with. They question everybody, they investigate. When the time coming for election, they realize you can't get nothing on Munilal, you can't get nothing on Anil Roberts. They bring back all these stories, hoping to distract you from their lack of performance. That they did not deliver water, they did not deliver street lights, they did not deliver jobs, they crash all the business. But they want to come back with this nonsense about corruption. That is what they want to come back. Man, I am the most investigated politician in the Caribbean. Yeah. I have to be careful. Pandit, if I didn't fa if I if I didn't eat meat the day before the Wali, they lock out. <laughs> they look for every and anything they could get, and they get nothing. They get nothing, nada, nothing. And today we can tell this country in no uncertain terms, brothers and sisters, that that corruption, as we say in the newspaper, they don't have a damn case. They didn't have it before, and they don't have it now. And I want to up to update you on that story, because there's something else happening behind that. The Trinidad and Tobago Police Service, we go every year to Parliament to go through their big, big yellow books. Now, I don't know if the PNM leave them book yellow, eh? but that's so from history time. The book is still yellow. We go through all these books to look at the TTPS, all the money is going to them. We have attorneys at law here tonight. When Parliament votes for money, it is for what is in the book, what is in the yellow book. Do you know there's no vote in the TTPS to pay foreign investigators from England? There's none. They cannot pay. You know today what the Ministry of Finance under Keith Rowley is doing? The Minister of Finance called Imbo and the Ministry of Finance now telling the TTPS, take money from your vote. Money that is the fixed police car. Go by Vimcock cross crossing. There are 200 cars packed up on the hill. The cars looking like they're squatting. They pack up on the hill. You can't fix police car. The police station, the light blow. Well, we can't get bulk for the people. You can't get bulk for the police station. They can't fix police station. They can't provide equipment. Policemen need a what's called a little voucher to check the teeth. Policemen could lose the teeth. One of these days, these policemen could be going around with plate. They could be bumping the gum. They can't check the eye after they get a voucher to get optical services. Policemen will go blind. They have no money to put to help the policeman. But the Ministry of Finance is telling the TTPS to break the law and take money from those votes to fix police station and pay English people in England. That is against the law. And today, we call upon Rowley to explain how the TTPS could take money that Parliament voted to fix police station and pay English people for an investigation that they've taken years to complete and they haven't found a damn thing. At least not a no politician. Because I want to tell you something. They target the politician. They target your UNC members and ministers. They didn't target the tea lady. They might target the car park attendant. They target we. And they can't find nothing. So the Ministry of Finance telling the TTPS to break the law and pay them. It is $50 million. Millions of pounds. And I hope that the TTPS is strong enough to tell them we can't do that. There's a next thing going on here. You all may not know. The Attorney General said the contract renew. It ends on Friday. The end of the month. Friday was Saturday. Friday. They said the contract renew. I tell you tonight on the street, on the pavement in Kuchawan Trace, Cabinet has not passed any note, any minute to approve that contract. What they're doing is Rowley telling them by word of mouth, verbally, all you know, pusur, pusur. Quiet, quiet. He's saying, oh, they renew the contract, renew the contract. But when they have to do that, they require a cabinet decision. And the cabinet, the cabinet is not passing any note. So they want to spend millions of dollars without cabinet approval. And I could tell you one thing, that given the head of the Trinidad Tobago Police Service today, I think they're going to get away with that. I think they're getting away with that. If they think the TTPS will go and take money from police station, to go and pay English people for doing nothing. They have a next thing coming. Let me so keep rolling. Bring your note next week Thursday Bring to the, the cabinet. Note. Bring the note to the cabinet this week. 
I challenge you to bring a note to cabinet and pass that. You won't and, do that. And tell them you're going to take money. You're going to take money away from policemen and policewomen to pay these English people. Let me remind them of this. Take it. Let me remind you all of this and understand this, which I would not tell you. Under Kamla Prasad, we said that there's something called corporate governance. There's rules. We follow procedure. So a minister is in, entitled to create policy, come up with plans and so on. And then the implementation is left to a system that is tried and tested. There is a board, there's a chairman, there's a procedure, there's a attendance committee, an HR committee. In Lifesport, for example, Lifesport had its own board of seven members. It had its own, in, its own organizational structure with a director, assistant director, accounts officer, HR officer, all of this procurement officer, the rock and roll, everybody getting the money. Then it had a sport company board and a sport company CEO and a corporate secretary all to the work. The minister don't get involved in that. So you could look in the nose hole without a swab, or you could look in the K-Pax. Or you can look where you want, you can't get an empty. So it's okay. Look, look, look. But let me tell all you. Come on, that's 11. Kamla Passad didn't buy no ferry down in Australia without no permanent secretary, and no board, and no invitation, and no tender. Kamla Passad, the Cessa, did not cut out the entire port board, tender committee, and so on. Kamala Basad Lissessa did not have an attorney general who rent out his own building and then so boldface take taxpayer money to outfit it and then put on a tight pants and say all your thief. So you have to be very, very careful because the same thing that protects Moonilal and Anil and all people's partnership ministers who follow process and allow boards permanent secretaries and public servants to do their work. Rowley cut out all that and put his friend Noel Garcia to build everything in Unicut. Munira was in charge of Unicut and HCC. you see, Munira builds fire station and police station. When Munira out, they put Noel Garcia in, they give here all kind of thing extra. Sports stadium, sport ground, Toruba Stadium, um, house in Tobago. Then they put he in charge of HCC. He building everything magnificent, seven presidents, house and so on, one man. So Rowley, August 11, we go see if them bricks go be researching all year, they might find things quicker. Back to Runa and Munira. Thank you. The second issue I want to raise briefly is this COVID matter. Now the PNM, that's it. The, the first narrative was corruption. We deal with that. The second one is COVID. They want to convince you you should vote for them because somehow they manage this COVID thing in a nice way and save people life. And without them, this country would have collapsed and people would have been ill and many people would have died and so on. Brothers and sisters, a businessman from Debe made a point to me a few days ago. A very important point. He's here tonight. I don't want to call him out. He's a very shy fellow. He told me, he said, hold on. Everything this government do is what is the international health protocols. Okay, they close the airport. The World Health Organization say that. They say put on face masks. Don't mind them and make none for nobody. The global World Health people say that. They say hand sanitize. They say that. He says, so they do all the global health protocols, which every country do, but what they had to do, which the World Health Organization couldn't do, was to give people their relief grant. They start with pandemic leave. All you ever hear about that? Yeah. Well, nobody gets a minute leave. They come with rental. Anybody get rental support? Yeah. They come then, they tell you, well, we have a um, salary relief grant. 80% of the people who have applied haven't gotten any. Then they come with NIS, some kind of bubble they're going on with NIS to pay a grant. People don't get that neither. So all the people who need to get their grant, the small business people who had to close their shop, close their businesses, family business and so on, they haven't gotten a single cent in relief for this entire COVID experience. That is what the government had to do. That is not what the World Health Organization had to do. That is what not, the, not what the communications for disease control in America had to do. You, the PNM, you, Rowley, Rowley, you had to do that and you have failed. Yeah. 
When we were in Parliament, I have the notes on my phone, Senator Wade Mark, others in the Senate, in the lower house, uh, myself, Rodney Charles, Mrs. Prasad Bissessa, and others kept raising the issue of border protection. When they came in power in 2010, they said we put in a border protection management system. Well, we never see that. And then Dillon himself, I think he was in trouble in New York with some old man up there. When that happened, he disappeared. Nothing like border control. Wade Mark and others kept asking, what is happening in the Southwest Peninsula? You're closing the airport, but you are not intensifying patrols on land, patrols at sea, ensuring that these people who are illegal, they don't get on land. Because when Venezuelans come on land, that is not fish we could pick up from the sea and throw it back in the sea. It's human beings. You have some type of commitment. So brothers and sisters, they did nothing. They couldn't buy gasoline for the Coast Guard boats. They could not put boats in the sea to monitor and patrol. They did not have the resources to put extra security on land. So today, we have now this backlash and a very critical point someone made. Border protection and border closure is not airport closure. They mix up the two. They close the airport and say we're protecting the border. <laughs> the airport is not the border. It's Cedras, Mayaro, Sh uh, Shakaramas, Point Lisas, Point Fortin. That is border. All the illegal points of entry are on your border. So border protection is to deal with that. Not Piaco, where you're going one day and this Delcy Rodriguez lady come in with a set of big Sawati from Venezuela. Rowley said, I didn't know them, I never seen them before in life. When he was exposed, he said, well, they come here, but I really wanted to, they come to talk COVID. That fella brings one lie upon the next lie upon the next lie. In fact, they, between Rowley and Stuart Young, they cannot even get their lies correct. They cannot even get consistency with lying. And brothers and sisters, that COVID management is a fallacy. That is a fallacy, that is propaganda. That the Al Singh fellow, he's a, he's a long time druggist. You stay in a pharmacy long enough, people call you a pharmacist. <laughs> he is a druggist. I think he worked in a pharmacy and, and, and it closed down because it bust. He's now portraying that they protected Trinidadians, protected Tobagonians. They didn't protect nobody. Kamla Prasad Misasa is the first political leader to distribute 10,000 masks for the people of Trinidad and Tobago. <laughs> At the height of the pandemic, they did not have a drop of hand sanitizer to give nobody. You had to go yourself. In fact, truth be told, at the height of the pandemic, they go on TV. This Rowley, he said, listen, thing bad now. It's water more than flour. Take a bandana. Head. Tie up your head and go to the grocery. You all remember that? This government, this wicked government, could not give Jews, people. Yeah. They say, go in the kitchen, take your sapi. And take this happy and tie it around your face. Take your kitchen. Go by the car, that jersey, that old jersey you was washing car with. Tie up that around your face and go to the supermarket. <laughs> that was their response. Yes. If we were in power, Kamla Prasad Bissessa, well, we would have been planning from last year, December, whenever that disease reared its head. We would have already had engagement with the private sector. And I'll tell you tonight, I don't want to repeat all of that. But we are 162 in the world in testing. Their official policy was don't test, don't tell. Don't test, don't tell. So they boasted, they beat beating the chest. Low rate of COVID, man. Low rate of death. They didn't tell you low rate of testing. Today, all over now, look what is happening with this community spread. We just heard something about somewhere in St. Augustine tonight again. You're hearing from schools what is happening because they failed to close the border. They fail to take serious action to protect citizens. So when you come back from Grenada, just before they close the airport, everybody line up and everybody come busting temperature gauge on your head. 35.4, 36.2, nice, move. So when you're coming through Cedras and you come through the sea, they will. <laughs> but when you see them, your temperature goes up. <laughs> so that is what is happening. So today, we face a crisis we face a crisis because of Stuart Young. And these wicked people, these devils, every day, or let's see Rowley on the papers every day with, with Young and Alwari and them. Every day they're digging up, digging up, turning sod, turning sod. I don't know. These fellas will go in a cemetery just now and dig up the cemetery, you know. 
and they still have the debt every day. They ain't building nothing in five years, not a school. They couldn't. No, my friend uh, in San Fernando told me the other day, a neighbor, five years they couldn't do nothing with the waterfront. Today, you know, they turn sod three times for the same waterfront. <laughs> The car park is a part of that waterfront project. They turn sun for that too. Everywhere they go, they move in with a fork. I better I pronounce that right. Yes, yeah. take your time. They go move in with a fork. What they move in with? Uh, you will make me mispronounce that one. Yeah. <laughs> so they move in around with a shovel. <laughs> and they move in around. And anyway, they see the digging up, digging up, digging up. And take picture. We start this, we start that. When you go on the San Fernando Wolf today, you're still seeing a stray dog and a crapo in the night. It has nothing to show. The last thing built in San Fernando was by the People's Partnership, the teaching hospital in, in San Fernando. A, a constituent from right here went on the floor, I think it's for 15 or 14 in San Fernando. He come back in my office, I said, boy, I'm so sorry to hear you was sick how it is. He said, boy, Rudy, I was sick. But I went to that hospital, Kamla Bill, and it was like a Hyatt. He said the hospital, the man, that thing it was like a Hyatt. That Kamla Bill, we built that. We finished the San Fernando uh, Academy for the Performing Arts. We finished that. Man, it started, we finished it. Nothing has been built in San Fernando. In our Puchis, the Ramai Trace Hindu School, five years now. This fellow Anthony Garcia sent me a note. I kept the note. I have it home. I said, I have to keep the note in his handwriting. He said, Don't worry, we will complete the Ramai Trace Hindu School. When he said that? About five years ago when he entered power, the Ramai school, Hindu school have finished. It finished? He finished. He finished and, and gone and the school have finished yet. Ask the people here. They come with the daily campus. In five years, they couldn't send one student to the campus. Not one. When the pandemic hit them, they realized now, water more than flower, they opened the campus to put patient, to put quarantine. That's what they opened it. It took a pandemic to open the Coover Health Center, uh, hospital, sorry. Now they're boasting, in a short time, they did 4,000 scans and so on. So we was doing for four and a half years across there. Nothing. So brothers and sisters, the, the, the tune you have to bear in mind is now is the time. Now is the time to get rid of Rowley. Now is the time to get rid of Stuart Young. Now is the time to get rid of all of them. They are, listen, this country cannot take one week more of Keith Rowley. Not one week more on the morning of the 11th is Liberation Day. It is Liberation Day on the morning of the 11th. Make sure that people come out in their numbers. Now we have a different campaign, brothers and sisters. By now you know the campaign a little different, huh? It's not like long time. It's not like long time. We can't go on the street corner. We can't put up David Junction, big meeting and so on. But I don't want to say too much because we live on the national airways. But we have about 25 people here, I see. Nothing well more. separated. Nothing well more, separated. nothing more. Yes. But it is, a different, um, it is a different campaign. So you have to spread the word. Use social media, your telephone, the messaging coming out, shows like this and so on. And send the message. The business community don't want them. The trade union movement don't want them. The NGO movement don't want them. The people of Arupuch don't want them. And I tell Anil, Anil do a big time advertisement. And he calls some candidate I running in this I area. I can research it, you know. But who, uh, I don't know the fella. No, I don't know the, I All we know about that fella is we don't think he own a long pants. <laughs> <laughs> but the fella, he will make no difference. He don't yeah, make no difference. Don't worry, don't worry. In Arupuchis, we tell the people, in Arupuchis, it is the same UNC candidate. It is the same campaign manager, Doc here. It is the same returning officer. It is the same opponent. And on the, on the night of the 10th, it is the same results. Hey, Nothing will change. As you say, returning officer, and let me let you all know, because today in the Guardian, and I want all of my lawyers who are here, I see about five lawyers here. You know, in a, a whole PNM virtual campaign in 20 different constituencies, and they buy out all the TV stations. I count two lawyers, and one is Arawi, who is really, we had a question which con conflicts Boxy Gay degree out of. But let me tell you all something in The Guardian, very seriously, because Rowley is telling you people out there that he is satisfied with the EBC. His minister or parliamentary secretary in the Ministry of Public Administration and his current MP for Laoketa Talparo, niece, 
is in charge of the EBC and he is saying he ain't worrying about no observers because we will run elections properly. But let me tell you all something. Do you know down in Labre, in that area, a returning officer and his friend along Mr. Qualls and somebody else went in to try to get into the office of the returning officer and a police officer told them this is a secure location you cannot enter here on a Sunday and she asked for ID and so on they began to berate her use obnoxious obscene language and she arrested them I want and do club politics all of my UNC hold on no club yet my UNC lawyers please look into that and make sure that the EBC has removed those two people from participating as returning officers in this election. What the hell they was going in the office to do? And well done, police officer. At least we know they have some who like fairness, equity, parity, and a fair, free election. That's all we want. So keep your eyes on the EBC as well. Keep your eyes on that process as you mobilize for election day. That is the message. Because they are arresting people in the EBC now for what disorderly conduct. Yes. That is bordering to assault. And that is the caliber of people we may have to deal with on election day. So we have to be extremely strong. This government realized that they built nothing. They have nothing to show. How much jobs they create under this government, the Petro Train people. They're gone, they're gone. I met a man the other day, I told you, the fellow almost in tears that he had to return his keys to the bank when he lost his job. He went to say, tell his wife and his children, I'm going to the bank with the keys to the house. That is what we have to deal with. So, so the only time, bear in mind another issue, we have committed ourselves to creating 50,000 jobs. One of those jobs could be for you, for you, for you. We are creating 50,000 jobs in the next UNC administration. But the only way, Trinidad and Tobago, the only way you could get your job is if Keith Rowley lost his job. He has to lose his job for you to get a job. So brothers and sisters, you have to get him out of his job. Otherwise, we will not get the 50,000 jobs. This is the, 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 the heart of the matter. Laptops, we are returning laptops to the children of Trinidad and Tobago. We are returning that. The, the, they put a laptop on a book list, $5,000 for a laptop for poor parents to buy. We will lower taxes. I read a story by some, I don't know who the man is. Eh? He, he says he's some lecturer in UWE, I don't know. I don't know the man. I'm not going to call him day. He said, well, the opposition leader promising um, lower taxes, but we'll spend on this and spend on that and spend on the other. I want to tell that fella, he must be getting a uni university degree in the Kellogg's box. So With that, Rawi. Yeah, with, <laughs> you know, with some lollipop box or something like that. When you widen the tax, uh, the tax bracket, the tech, it was called the tax net. It's something called a tax net. It means if you have a job, the more people have jobs, the more people pay taxes. If you invest heavily in the energy sector, in, la in downstream, manufacturing plants and so on you get what is called investments coming in the country when investors come in the country do you know they pay taxes they have to pay they have to distribute money they create jobs so you will create the revenue by increasing the amount of people with jobs that is how you will get VAT you will get income tax you will get other types of taxation going so once you create the jobs you will get the revenue once you attract the investors this man come into power in 2015 all you remember, he said, I'm putting a plyboard factory in Labre. All you should hit him with some plyboard now, figuratively. <laughs> figuratively. You all should remember that he said, a plyboard factory. He take 20 million to bail out a toilet paper factory. When he came in, when he came in, they say, we come in with sandals. All you remember, now is the time, you know. Now is the time. We come in with sandals. Sandals turn to scandals. Because they, they, they had a hush-hush, some type of hush-hush arrangement. We blowed up the bits. Sandals was essentially a good idea. Most people believe that Tobago deserve and must have at least three all-inclusive um, facilities. That is a good idea. But this PNM government, this Rowley government cannot do nothing good. Some bubble they come with there, it gone through. 
You all remember Dragon Feel? Mm. He was whining in a conga line somewhere in Caracas. Actually, show them. Actually, show them. You, 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 you want to see him whine? Yeah, well. <laughs> he was whining in Caracas. They gone secretly to meet Maduro. They said, Dragon Feel, Dragon Feel. Dragon gone. The dragon dragon fly away. That gone through. Then they talk about a big time industrial estate in Point Lisas for manufacturing and so on. Where that gone? Not what but they even put up a parlor to sell dinner and chubby. Who negotiated the gas price? The gas price in Houston. I raised in Parliament a matter. It is yeah. public record, I could tell you. I told the Prime Minister it was dangerous to be going to negotiate gas price by yourself and carry your caddy, Stuart Young, with you. That was dangerous. Governments don't do that. Anil Roberts was in cabinet. If we are going to participate in a meeting, permanent secretary going, lawyer going, technical accounting chairman. people, chairman of the relevant board going, minister the one negotiate nothing. They come back, they say, man, thank God they went. They were able to hammer out a deal. They hammer out a deal and point this as close. Look at them boogie in, in Caracas, dragon deal. So no dragon deal, no scandal, no um, no no sandal, sorry, well, scandal, plenty yeah. scandal. Yeah, plenty no scandal. point Lisa's industrial um, facility develop. What else? They have a you remember the man said they're buying boat for a port in Toko? <laughs> I want all you go by that port place right now in Toko and see what you will see there. Huh? You see two stray dog, two stray cat out in the road there. No port reach there yet. But ministers buy vessels. But minister buying all kind of thing across the place. Brothers and sisters, nothing they have done. The point we're making is look around Trinidad and Tobago. They have done nothing in five years. So their campaign is blame Kamala, blame the UNC. Oh, them fellas don't bring them back. Corruption, corruption. And now COVID, we, we save your life. Save what life? Nobody save your life. Lysol, hand sanitizer, and mask save your life. When the time come, all you stay home. I remember that time. I, I pray to God they don't come back again. People didn't even want their brother and sister to come by the house. People were responsible and saved their own life. It don't depend on Rowley and the all thing. But they have nothing to show. And now they come in now. Vote for us. Stuart Young, nothing. He's the worst minister of national security this country has ever seen. Yeah. Martin Joseph is a general in comparison to he and Martin Joseph was a failure. Rest his soul, of course. See what you have the words? The other day, I didn't know if I'm Anil, so I, he going to put down his name as a candidate. This man is big lawyer and thing, huh? Big lawyer. He put down his name as a candidate. Now, when I put down my name as a candidate, I say, well, I'm not a member of parliament anymore. That is not my occupation. But I'm an, an attorney at law. I pay my dues every year and so on. I'm an attorney, so I put Rudal Munila an attorney at law. He put on his name, they say, where's your occupation? He said, Minister of Government. <laughs> Anyone all you ever go in the Central Statistical Office book on occupations and see Minister? <laughs> minister is not an occupation. Oh, that is a title you get from an appointment by the President of the Republic on the advice of the Prime Minister. Such idiots run in this country. Wow. He's a Minister of Government, that's the occupation. <laughs> that's what he put there. In fact, they should go to court and disqualify him for dotishness. <laughs> That, brothers and sisters, is the caliber of people. You really think you want a government to come back there with Imbert, Heinz, what do you name the Al Singh? Oh Camille Robinson Regis. That's the WPC in Parliament. She read warrant in Parliament. <laughs> Up to now, nobody never search your locker, your car trunk. Never search your shoes in case it have a, a jump inside it. But where's she on? But you know warrant for she? <laughs> they deposit money in all kind of bank and so on. No warrant, nothing. They take government money on credit card last time they were there and buy what? Wig. Buy what with it? Wig. All you remember well, now they're coming back now to tell you vote for them to go back to suffer. This country under the PNM Rowley, under the Rowley's PNM, this country has been like a burden. It has been distress after distress. Every week something wrong happened. Every week. He used to quarrel with Kamala Prasad Bisesa. She's changing ministers every year. He, app he, he appoint a minister on Friday. And fire the minister on Sunday. <laughs> he appoint a minister one day, then find out the fellow is a citizen from an African country. He take back the appointment. The fellow go to Africa and come back. He give him back the appointment. The fellow then get, I think he fire him again. And now he begging to come back. And now the fellow begging to come back. <laughs> so brothers and sisters, they, that, that motley crew without motley though, 
That crew that they put together in parliament and call themselves a cabinet cannot run this country. Mrs. Prasad Bissessa has put a team together, young, vibrant, energetic people. If you don't have these type of young people with fresh ideas, new ideas, with the energy certainly to govern a country in trouble, she has said that we will have experienced people in the cabinet as well who have proven track records so that they can come back or they can come new people with experience and continue the work that we started in 2010 and which came to an abrupt end in 2015. So now is not the time to risk your future. Now is not the time to risk the future of your children and your grandchildren. I am sorry to say it, but I'm picking up a vibe like some people. It is a very bad, bad, bad thing. And people must not think like this. People are telling me, you know, not everybody have the courage of the lion. Not everybody are fearless like us on this table here. Sometimes people come to me and they say, boy, if the UNC do win, I don't say I'm packing up my bag and I'm going to Grenada. But they come to America. They go to Grenada and Barbados and St. Kitts and St. Lucia. I want to tell you if Rowley, God forbid, Rowley come back in power, the Venezuelans go in Caracas. It's so bad. Lord. They might swim back. That's a serious thing. So, I put it to you that we must not have this negative feeling as well. We must be positive. From what we are seeing, these motorcades of the political leader, I don't think you should call that motorcade no more. That humongous cade. <laughs> <laughs> There's a humongous kid. They had 500 plus vehicles yesterday in Maruga, Tableland. We have motorcade coming up on Saturday. It is called Now is the Time, the Drive. We will put a thousand vehicles on the road. When we pull off, we might come back to the junction and find people now leaving. <laughs> that is the motorcade because that is the way we're campaigning now because of the lack of public meetings and so on. And on that motorcade, we will be having speeches. We'll be having live entertainment. The lion will be there. Myself and the imitation lion <laughs> will be there. And we will be on that motorcade. We invite the whole of Trinidad and Tobago to come down the Bay Junction. 10 a.m. But at 9.30, 9 o'clock somewhere there, we are having a little emancipation day function to acknowledge this important national holiday. And we are giving some awards to some of the people who have contributed in the community. And then we go on our drive. So if we have a busy weekend, I want to invite everybody because we have to sensitize, agitate, organize people to come out in their numbers. In our Apuchis, we are looking at presenting 17,000 votes for the United National Congress. And this Before you go, don't wrap up there yet. Because you have been involved in politics. You are a student of the labor movement. You understand politics. I am going to ask you, Rudal Munilal, have you ever seen, with 13 days to go before an election, an incumbent government failing to produce a manifesto? Oh, yes, man. That was on my notes. These people going to the polls. Mrs. Prasad Bissessa, in her speech last year in Parliament, her opposition leader speech, it was one of the most unique and different speeches that we have ever heard. It was never a speech attacking the government, Pekong, Joke, all them kind of thing. She read for, I think, about two hours almost, a manifesto, a plan along every sector, infrastructure, environment, works, health, education, foreign policy, crime security. She presented a plan for the budget last year. Today, we were the first party under her leadership to put on the internet a national economic transformation master plan. Look at there, look at there. A national economic tran a national economic transformation master plan 2020, 2025. The United National Congress. Now is the time. And this presented by Mrs. Prasad Bisesa. Where's Rowley plan? Where he plan? He has no plan. And I want to end, I know the time going, but I want to call yeah, on Rowley you talk, tonight. You talk, man. I want to tell Rowley tonight, get your paws off the refinery. That refinery belongs to everybody in this room and everybody who is a citizen of Trinidad and Tobago. It is, it is owned by you, the people. Rowley, the hours are coming to an end. The hours are coming to an end. Get your paws off the refinery. If you want to sell anything, sell your gold pen in Tobago. Oh, yeah. You have a deed to that. Sell that. Sell that with two three gold. 
but leave the people's refinery alone. Don't sell that. Otherwise, we will get into the same problem, Anil, that we had to deal with. Ram Logan and others, the aluminium smelter, you all remember that? They sign in before election in 2010. When we get into there, it's a cumbersome legal and international contractual arrangement. And it took years, it took time, it took effort, it took money. So do not go and sign away nothing. Allow the incoming government of Kamala Prasad, the Sessa, and her cabinet to take a policy decision on that. You are a member of the National Security Council under Kamala Prasad Bissessa. What will you, Kamala Prasad Bissessa, and the incoming government sworn in or to be sworn in on August 11, 12, and 13, what will you do to secure the entire border of Trinidad and Tobago to keep our citizens safe? It is very simple. We have outlined that plan. Clearly, we have to ramp up what is called onshore patrols. We have to put infrastructure and institutions, and Mrs. Prasad Bissessa spoke about this, I think, two nights ago. We have to put the infrastructure and institutions on shore, including immigration, including police, including other areas of the government, other institutions and law enforcement on shore. Ramp up that with human resources, material resources, so that you protect your border. We have to ensure that those vessels that the Coast Guard have you don't have to buy vessels, this coast guard have vessels. Oh, yes. Ensure you put diesel, start with that. And you, you fix them, you, you quickly repair and equip them, make them fit for purpose and go out in the ocean, go out in the sea, along the shoreline of course, you're not going to the middle of the Atlantic Sea. And ensure, brothers and sisters, that you protect so that the persons who are minded to jump on the little raft and the dinghy or swim and so on, they, 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 you repel them. At sea, you cannot wait for them to come on land. So you take strong action to defend your borders. It begins with that. It may well require some other international help as well in that area because across the world there are governments and countries that deal with border protection. Some actually are continental. They share a continent with different countries. So border protection is not rocket science. But under our incoming government, Mrs. Prasad Bissessa has said, we will have the resources, we will build the institutions to manage both on land and offshore. Final so that question. We will, we will deal with that problem. I know I like that because let me tell you, sorry, we're going over time, so watch any live. Let me tell you something. Information is key. Politics is about information, about policy. That's what you vote for. Not about who is Indian, African, Chinese, Syrian, Muslim, Hindu, um, Presbyterian, Christian, Rastafari. Irrelevant. All of we is one love we eat everything what we need to do is vote on policy and this is the most important policy on the ballot and i'm going to ask rudal munilal rudal munilal foreign policy for the first time in the history of the republic of trinidad and tobago since 1962 is i dare say the most important issue on the ballot come august 2010 august 10th 2020 Pete Christopher Rowley has put Trinidad and Tobago in a precarious position. With this potential deal signing at any day now with patriotic energy, uh, energy of the uh, refinery at Petrotrin, with clause or condition number seven from the cabinet of Trinidad and Tobago stating that Patriotic must sign an MOU with Trafegura PTE connected to Wilmer Ruperti, Pedevesa, Maduro, and Venezuela. That will put us on the radar for national sanctions from the United States of America, which will impact every single citizen out there. Please state. Kamla Passad, Bissessas, the United National Congress, your policy on foreign policy with regards to Venezuela oil, gas, energy, refinery. Let's begin by remembering that at the budget presentation in October or day about last year, Mrs. Prasad Bissessa went on record to indicate that we recognize Mr. Juan Guaido as the president of the Republic of Venezuela. Now, when we said that, people got crazy. They got mad. They started to quarrel and so on. How oh, you could do that? He's not the president. Um, so you could go in Woodford Square and say you're the Prime Minister and you become the Prime Minister. People didn't understand in Venezuela there's a constitution 
and the constitution provides that where the election is fraudulent and has not been certified, the president is not recognized. It is the president of their national assembly who is Mr. Juan Guaido. That is why the United States, Europe, Canada, and elsewhere have recognized him. What do you think? These people in Europe mad? You think America crazy? You think UK crazy to recognize a man as president? It is pursuant to the rule of law. So we must begin with the rule of law. I, also, when they got into power 2015, he picked up somebody by the name of Dennis Moses. Now, Dennis Moses could be sitting down here and we don't know him here. <laughs> Nobody knows what he looks like. Nobody knows what he sounds like. When you ask him a question in parliament, he suffers from occupational disorders. He suffers from some disorder of the mind that he cannot respond to you in a logical and reasonable manner. Let me tell you something, it is tedious to communicate with that fellow. I am sure when he speaks to the rest of the world, they think that they're on the wrong channel. <laughs> Listening on the wrong channel is not English. Because you cannot understand him. He has caused embarrassment. You all remember the vote with the poor country, Dominica, Dominica. to write off some debt and so on in the aftermath of disasters. You remember that controversy? You all remember just the other day with the OS? The OS took a decision to impose sanctions and they said that whether you're present in the meeting or not, you are binded, it's law, international law. He went secretly and write a little note and say, we don't support that. They say, but you can't do that, it's not whether you support or not, that is the decision of the body. This fellow, Dennis Moses, has caused us international embarrassment. There's a newspaper article today about the United, our UN mission in New York and the role of Dennis Moses. He is an embarrassment to foreign affairs. I mean, he took over from people like the doctor, Suruj Ratan Rambachan, Winston Dukaran. He take over from them. That is, that's like if you move a professor and the fellow who will help you outside with a little rubbish and then you put you inside as, as the minister. That is what they did. So on, the, on, on that wider question, we must recognize the rule of law. That is the first most important thing. And we must not play games. We will not be involved in violating or undermining sanctions by the international community. The international community has applied sanctions to Venezuela with cause. Trinidad and Tobago's government must never undermine, must never violate those international sanctions. We must stand strong for the rule of law and democracy, whether it's in Venezuela, Guyana, South Africa, anywhere, you have to stand with the rule of law. And therefore, we will ensure that we don't violate those sanctions. And we must investigate what transpired with the Delcy Rodriguez visit and the sale the sale of fuel that ended up in Venezuela. We must investigate that. Anil Roberts, Roberts shared with you important information in black and white, where in a shady arrangement at best, uh, fuel came from Italy, I believe, to Trinidad, lodged it here for some time, and then under some guise, heritage sold to uh, um, a particular dealer who said go in Aruba. The Aruban government said not we, that never touch Arubian soil. Not we. It went somewhere near Aruba and then turned around, changed the bill of lading and it ended up in Caracas. The government are trying to be said we know nothing about that. We didn't sell there. But I want to tell you something. Keith Rowley, you could be the subject of a next investigation. Uh, investigating the Prime Minister Rowley, investigating his golf partner, Newman George, investigating his lawyer, Michael Kwamena. That is what has to be done with that sordid affair of that fuel in defiance of, of sanctions by the international community. So Rowley, you won't get away. You know, he attacked people like us. He attacked me. I'm a former housing minister. He is too. He attacked me. He said, thing going on in my ministry. Don't mind I'm not liable. Don't mind police are interested in me. He says something went wrong. Munilal should be responsible. When a whole building named Las Alturas fall down, he said, not me. That wasn't me. That was HDC. I is minister in charge of policy. You all remember? A whole building fall down in, in uh, Money Hill there, Mo. Yes, in a Lavantin, Lavantin up there. And, and Noel Garcia, yeah. they trying to fight the, um, the findings of Las the... Las Alturas, we have the pictures to show you. I must get those pictures in my office now. The Las Alturas building fall down. But they say you build start Fort Greenville. They say we start Greenville. We <laughs> under Rowley, they start Greenville. When we reach in there, we did the drainage work. In five years, we were there, the partnership. It never flood like that. As soon as we leave, 
one year, two years after massive flood in Greenville because they did not maintain the drainage. They did not maintain the retention ponds. And flooding is a big area in Arapuchi, so I come to that. Mrs. Basad Bissessa has outlined a plan. It involves retention ponds. It involves cleaning and clearing and paving major river courses, expanding the network for the water. We cannot control the water coming from the sky. It's not in our control. But we can control the ground where it goes and therefore there's a comprehensive drainage plan that is presented already she spoke about this i think at the law oh lord yes uh, you, you, you say water now you get me vexed now we going again when we were in government under ganga singh kamla pasad we says and you were in cabinet we had up to 72 percent of the population was getting a 24 7 water supply all right, all right. had we won without email gate and the life we would have hit a hundred percent already the Rowley, the Hunt, a Pomsite Rasta and the like, with the 24 7 water supply to citizens has dropped to 22 percent. Correct. What are you going to do when you win? What are you all going to do? The people need water, not only for Iowa and Soka Party, they need water to drink, to bathe, to take care of their children. And this is why our investment has to be in preventing flooding and keep the water you can retain the water for industrial purposes you can just how you take water from the sea you can you can have catchment areas for water on land that you increase the amount of water another project that they criminalize they demonize and and because you know the pnm is sometimes so good at propaganda they, they shout from the top of the hill you know corruption and thing we had embarked on something called a beaten waste water plant now, up to now, notice in five years, nobody charged, nobody arrested, nobody questioned on that. But they say corruption, they demonize the project. Do you know that would have, that would have given six million gallons of water a day more to the, to the WASA, to the industrial estates? Six million gallons a day more. You could imagine for an entire year how much water would have been produced so people would not have to go without water. And if you trap the water in retention ponds all over the country where it is prone to flooding, of course, you can use that for industrial purposes. Increase the amount of water available to you, the residents. So brothers and sisters, we have the plan. We have the, the vision. We have the leader. We have the team. All we need now is the vote to get them out and chase them away in the last local government election, December 2nd. If all you see the map, the whole map turned yellow. But they had one or two little red dots I find sometime on the we western front. We, we have to push that red dot in the Gulf of Korea. Push them in the sea, push them in the sea, move them out and take the entire Trinidad as yellow for the United National Congress and ensure that people come out, they come out in their numbers. This country cannot tolerate this fellow who linemen every day playing the fool with golf and so on all over the place and shouting and bullying everybody. He does quarrel with everybody, everybody. This country cannot take that anymore. It is time for compassionate leadership, determined leadership, leadership with a vision, with a plan, with a very good team to implement that plan. And that is what the United National Congress will offer you on August 10th. So thank you all. God bless you. God bless the Dogra Politics Show. And thank you to the drummers, African drummers tonight, Tata drummers tonight. For the lion is here. All our supporters, executive officers, our lawyers, our activists, our supporters, Mr. DJ Bravo in the house here tonight supporting. So thank you all very much and God Don't go yet. Don't go yet. Let me tell you, DJ, we done had the lion already. We are tune after tune. I want the Kenneth C. Passat now because the Dogla and the African Germans. I want to hear a little chutney now. A little chutney tune. UNC and tune after tune. We are chutney. We are soca. We are Calypso. We are rock and roll. We are hip hop. We are Zessa. We are all kind of tune. All the other one is Peter C. Peter C. Peter C. DJ, bust the tune. I want Zessa. I want Thomas. All your friends, you. Ronald Bolivar. All your friends. You are the team, you are the team, don't be a part of it, don't be a part of it, don't be a part of it.